I am so happy to see people. I may have to come out and kiss somebody. I don't know. I have not preached to people since last March. So a year. I have been talking to cameras, and there is nothing worse than saying something funny to a camera. <laughs> because you get nothing back. It's about the most deadpan thing that can happen to you. That's a very generous gift from the church. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want you to say a special hello to my husband of 54 years. Dave, you want to stand up? I might not be here tonight if it wasn't for Dave. He put up with me a long time before I got so sweet. <laughs> but now you're getting rewarded, aren't you, bud? <laughs> not saying much, I don't know. Well, I hope that I'm gonna say something tonight that's gonna keep some of you out of trouble in the future. Amen? Amen. Say a special hello, thank you. Say a special hello to all the campuses and wherever you happen to be tonight online. And I want to talk to you about how to be godly in an ungodly world. Because you know what? First of all, where's my time thing? Okay, there it is back there. I don't know how much attention I'll pay to it, but there it is. They told me I could preach as, they told me I could preach as long as I wanted to, and that's kind of a dangerous thing to tell me. But. I promise to behave. You know, you go to a great church if you go to church here, and what I'm going to say tonight is definitely not everybody everywhere, but the line is getting very blurry between who is a believer and who isn't. Amen? Yeah. And what I mean by that is you know, just because somebody's got a bumper sticker on their car, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're walking with God the way that they should or that they're not compromising in their life behind the scenes. And I really believe that if we're going to put bumper stickers on our car and hang Christian jewelry around our neck and carry Bibles and do things that make us look like we're Christians, then I think we ought to live the life. Otherwise, I think we need to just take them off. And uh, it's, it's actually getting extremely concerning. The, the Bible says that in the last days, which I don't know how much longer it's going to be before Jesus is going to come back, but one thing's for sure, a lot of the signs that the Bible talks about are definitely being fulfilled Today And so we have to realize that if God chose us to live in this time frame, now hear me, you're not just kind of born accidentally and put into some time frame somewhere in the world. You, you're, God puts you in a place, in a time frame, for a reason. And if you're here in this time frame, at this time in world history, then you've got a job to do. It's not all up to the people standing up here. Matter of fact, most of the people who need help are not going to come in here. They're going to be out there where you're at. And so our job is to train you up that you might go out and do the work of the ministry. I'm going to say that again. The five-fold ministry is called to train you up that you might go out and do the work of the ministry. And this is not a time to just come to church and admire the person on the platform. This is a time to get everything you possibly can and make sure that you're ready to take what you hear and go out in the world and use it. Amen? In Matthew 24, there's signs of the end times. And 
one of the things it says is that deception is going to be great. Matter of fact, it's going to be so great that if God did not shorten the days for the sake of the very elect, that no man could stand the deception that's coming on the world. Do you pray on even a semi-regular basis that God will protect you from deception, that you will not be deceived? Do you pray that? If you don't pray that, I want to encourage you to pray that every day. Because to think that you can't be deceived is deception itself. Amen? I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that will hopefully get my point across. I know a man who, whose wife decided that she wants a divorce, and so... He knows another man who was getting a divorce and this man has an apartment and he had a lease on the apartment but he didn't really want to keep the apartment because even though he's still married to his wife, he's living with his girlfriend so he wanted to sublease his apartment. <laughs> You're laughing, you haven't even heard the crazy part yet. And, but it's good to hear somebody laugh. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so he suggests to my friend, <laughs> I'm still going. He suggests to my friend that they fast one day a week for one of the fruit of the Spirit. You're not getting it. <laughs> He's married, he's living with his girlfriend. And he thinks they should fast one day a week <laughs> for the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> I'm like, have you lost your mind? God says he wants obedience, not sacrifice. <laughs> Amen? And I think, I do think a lot of times people don't do what God tells them to do, but then they'll do some other religious work to try to make up for the thing that God told them to do that they didn't do. Isaiah talked about this in Isaiah 58. The people said, why have we fasted and you haven't seen it? Why have you not noticed our fasting? And God comes back and says, well, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please. <laughs> you mistreat your workers. You quarrel and you have strife. And you mistreat one another. So he's basically saying there that if your behavior is going to be ungodly, <laughs> then... Forget the fasting. Now, I'm not talking to any of you. This is just for your pathetically compromising friends. Not for you. But, but just in case you would get tempted, I really want everybody to take this to heart tonight because... There is such a pull out in the world to pull people into that gray area, that blurry area. I don't think anybody should ever have to ask us if we're a Christian. I think they should not be around us more than five or 10 minutes and they'll know. And not because not because we're preaching to them and not because we've got on a certain kind of jewelry or we've got a bumper sticker on our car, but there should be something about us, which of course is Jesus and the Holy Spirit on our lives, that comes through our behavior. There's nothing more important than how we behave. 
It's more important than how often you go to church. It's more important than how often you fast. It's more important than how much of the Bible you've got underlined. Come on, we get our Bibles out, and I've been using this one a couple of years, so it's, it's really marked up good. Yeah. Stars and underlines and yellow and pink and oh my goodness. And we can look at that sometimes and think we are so spiritual. <laughs> or sometimes the pastor has opened to such and such, and boy, if we've got that underlined... Come on, you know, that there's a little puff in the flesh. It's like, and we kind of scoot it over a little bit and hope the person next to us <laughs> sees how much we know. But you know what? We don't know anything unless we're doing it. We don't know anything unless we're doing it. And I'd like to even add, it's not even are we doing it in front of our Christian friends at church on Sunday. You could probably cross that one off too. It's are we doing it behind closed doors at home Come on. See, I learned a long time ago that God sees everything I do. And the thing that is very important to me is that I live my life before God and that I want my reputation with Him to be good and that my reputation with Him is much more important than my reputation with people. See, sometimes we can do what's right if the right person's watching us that we want to impress, but what do we do when nobody is watching? Hmm. Well, anyway. <laughs> Another story. A girl called our offices this has been probably a year ago. Sweet, sweet, sounded like a young girl. She maybe ain't, hadn't even been saved that long. And at least I hope she hadn't been because that would make it even worse. <laughs> and I'm kind of hoping that she didn't even go to a church because if she did, it had to be a really bad one. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> she said, um, some of my friends, my Christian friends, are doing things that are against the law. They're breaking the law, but they're really being blessed. And so they said that God's grace is covering. <laughs> Telling the honest truth. Is that true? She wanted us to tell her if that was true. I mean, now why would you even need to make that phone call? Like I said, I'm believing she was maybe only saved a week and wasn't in a church yet. But you know what? If people don't get this kind of stuff from the pulpits, where in the world are they gonna get it? They're not gonna get it on television. They're not going to get it on the internet. They're not going to get it on the news. They can't be guaranteed they're going to get it from their Christian friends. And I love to encourage people and tell you how much God loves you and how he wants to prosper you. But Paul told Timothy to urge, encourage, warn, and rebuke with his teaching. Not just encourage, but to also warn and rebuke. 
So, you know, I would have rather come here tonight and just taught some funny message. I've got some really funny stuff. I mean, I could have had everybody just rolling in the aisles, but I knew that this was what God wanted me to bring to you tonight because I really want to keep you out of trouble in the future and trouble is coming. Yes, the pandemic has been awful, but the other things that are going on in the world are actually more awful. Everybody's wearing masks, but to be honest, a lot of Christians have been wearing a mask for a long time. just not one you can see. Yeah. Oh, listen, I remember, I well remember the days, and it's okay to start out like this, but if you're still like this 40 years after you're saved, there is an issue. I well remember when we would, you know, if the devil can start a fight in the family, it'll be on Sunday morning when you're on your way to church. <laughs> and I well remember when somebody would stir up something before we got in the car, and then Dave and I would argue all the way to church. I probably did most of the arguing, but. <laughs> and then, you know, the kids would be in the back seat and they'd start saying stuff, and then Dave would start swinging at them, you know, <laughs> driving the car. But I tell you what, when we got to that parking lot, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. It's a great day in Jesus. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. It took the devil three chapters in Genesis to deceive Eve. So I wonder, <laughs> after all these years he's had to work, what kind of deception is going on today? The devil is alive and well on planet Earth. Revelation 12, 9, the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, our Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. And so, he's here. But we have authority over him. But it's not gonna do any good to try to cast out devils if you don't even have authority over a sink full of dirty dishes yet. You say, huh? <laughs> if you're not even taking care of what belongs to you and your whole life behind closed doors at home is a mess, your finances are a mess, what you, your car is a mess, everything's a mess, it starts at home. It starts with, with the basic foundation, with getting along with the people in your house. I can't fight with Dave all day and then come up here and preach. Well, I could, but it wouldn't be very anointed. <laughs> Deception means to believe a lie. If you look it up in the Vines Greek Dictionary, it means to cheat, deceive, beguile, that which gives a false impression, rather by appearance, statement, or influence. It's crafty, it's bait. It's a snare, it's a wandering from the right path. It's when we believe that good is evil and evil is good, that right is wrong and wrong is right. And boy, we got some of that going on in the world. Amen. My granddaughter's getting married 
in March and her and her boyfriend went to a pastor that's going to marry them and he got all their information, their address and you know everything and so and this is the pastor and he says uh, so this is your address uh, now are you already living there? <laughs> They're not getting married until March the 20th why would they already be living there? <laughs> it was almost like he assumed that they were already living together because that's just what the world does now. And I rarely ever stand up here and tell people they shouldn't live together before they get married that somebody doesn't get up and leave. So don't move or we'll know what you're doing. <laughs> but we obviously need to tell people that from the pulpit. I would think they would know that, but because there's so much of it going on in the world, Come on, you can't let the world educate you. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. You study the Word of God, and this is the only truth that really exists. And whatever you do, don't go to the internet for truth. I mean, according to Facebook, two weeks ago, I was in jail for bootlegging CBD oil. <laughs> Which isn't even illegal to sell anyway. They sell it all over the place, but I was in jail. Two years ago, I was dead. So many people were so upset that I was dead that I had to get on Facebook and say, here I am, not dead. Still alive. Also, as of two weeks ago, I had quit the ministry and I now have a vitamin business. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of stuff you gotta deal with. And we had people calling trying to buy the vitamins. <laughs> and, and one person got downright mad that we would not sell her these vitamins that we had advertised and we kept trying to tell her, no, Joyce did not quit the ministry. She's still in the ministry. She's not in jail. She's not selling CBD oil. <laughs> Don't be so gullible that you just believe whatever anybody says. The Bible says when there is a bad report given about anybody, that it should be confirmed in the mouth of two or three reliable, <laughs> reliable witnesses. <laughs> Come on, we need to go back to some of the old stuff. I think we need just a tad more holiness preaching. Hmm. a wandering from the right path. You know, we don't even really like to call sin, sin. We call it our problem, our mistake, our addiction, our bondage, our weakness, and sometimes even our disease. But we don't like to say we sinned. But that's what God calls it. Oh, did you hear so-and-so fell into adultery? You don't fall into adultery. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, it's not like you're just walking along and oops, you fall into adultery. I mean, you, there had to be a lot of other stuff that went on before that. And it starts with little stuff and people that are wise, people who have prayed, God, please don't let me get deceived. I mean, you know the instant that the devil's trying to start something. I had a man at our church one time, a good friend of Dave's. He said to me one night in, in the back of the church, he said, I just wish my wife was as pretty as you are. I went straight and told my husband. And if he would have ever said anything like that to me again, Dave would have went and talked to him. But that's how stuff gets started. Now, like I said, I know this is not for you. So don't, don't get mad at me. I know it's not for you. Isaiah 50, 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I'm not real sure what woe is, but I know I don't want any of it. <laughs> Society today is lacking in integrity. Matter of fact, you can ask a lot of young people, what, what's, what is integrity? What's the definition? They don't even know. They don't even know what it is. Integrity means you say what you're gonna do and you do what you said. It means that you're honest. How many of you have had the wonderful experience of having a repairman scheduled? <laughs> See, you already know where I'm going. <laughs> you took off work to be there for the appointment. He's supposed to be there at one o'clock. He doesn't come, he doesn't call. Oh, I'm sorry, I just got busy. That kind of stuff goes on all the time. We're at a point in our society where it's very difficult to really depend on people's word. But listen, we have to set the example. That's what I'm saying. We have a job to do. I <laughs> Tonight, I'm calling every one of you into ministry. I mean, into full-time ministry. And I'm charging you with the job of going out in the world and being salt and light. Salt means you've got some flavor to your life. There's something there that somebody wants. I wanna be like that. That person's got something I want. If you tell somebody you're gonna call them back, call them back. Oh, I'll call you sometime and we'll have lunch. You don't even like them. You don't intend to have lunch with them. <laughs> it was just something to say. Oh, I'll call, you, I'll call you sometime and we'll have lunch. <laughs> I usually come here once a year so I can say whatever I want to. many Christians are mad at somebody else? More than or not. And you may have come here tonight with somebody you're mad at. <laughs> and yet we know full well what the Bible says about forgiveness. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is the biggest door that we give the devil open door. He gains more ground through unforgiveness than through anything else. We have to get, we have to become experts at forgiving and not being easily offended and touchy. And there's so much of that out in the world. Well, what you said wasn't politically correct and it offended me. Well, the Bible says don't take offense. It's not just a matter of you offended me. The Bible says don't take offense. 
Just because somebody tries to give you some doesn't mean you have to take it. Amen. Oh, get so good at forgiving that you make the devil so mad he can hardly stand it. <laughs> I got lots of time. God is long-suffering and merciful. He patiently tries to draw people out of sin into his forgiveness and holiness. But the day will come when he will not merely put up with what is taking place in the world. And God will deal with this mess. And we want to make sure that we are on the right side of it the side of fighting against it and being an example. I'll tell you what, you can, be a, you can preach a sermon and not open your mouth. And you don't have to act weird like you live on some planet called Christian planet. You don't have to be hyper-religious. You can be in the world and not be worldly. You can, you can be friendly with unbelievers to a certain point. We can't all stay away from all the unbelievers. Otherwise, nobody's ever going to get brought into the kingdom. But you do have to make sure that you're influencing them and they're not infecting you. Come on. That's where you got to just, you got to be so careful with the deception that the enemy doesn't draw you in. Well, I just started going to the bar with them twice a week because I was trying to lead them to Jesus. <laughs> Is this all right? I want to help you. I, I, I want you to remember some of this if the devil comes after you. And let me tell you, when he comes after you with deception, you got to know some stuff. You got to not just have a few things underlined. You got to know some stuff. You need to be in church on a regular basis, but not just to get check marks on your church calendar, but to learn and to grow. And everything you hear, you need to be ready to go out and do it. Amen. Romans 14:12. Well, 11 and 12, as it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. And each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. <laughs> Woo. God is not going to ask you about somebody else. only going to ask you about you. So no matter what they're doing, that doesn't mean you can do it. I don't care if a hundred Christians you know are compromising. That doesn't mean that you can. And to compromise means to go just a little tiny bit below what you know to be right. Hmm. I wish this was funnier, I'm sorry. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit below what you know to be right. God gives us his very own righteousness through Christ. But he gives us righteousness so we can go out in the world and do what's right. Amen? Amen? Be ye holy, even as I am holy. I want you to look at this. It's a good thing this is only one night. That's all my notes on how to be godly in an ungodly world. 
and we are on page two. <laughs> you know, God wants his goodness to lead men to repentance. That's what the Bible says. It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. But I think if he has to scare the hell out of them, that he will, and I would be willing to help him <laughs> if need be. God is love, and he's filled with mercy, but he's also just. And eventually people will reap what they have sown, and that's what scares me for them. That's why we have to tell them. Todd, Julie, we have to tell them. We have to tell them. People have to be told. Well, what are some things that can deceive? Well, riches can deceive. Mark 4.19 says, but the worries of this life, the deceitful of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it un fruitful we all like nice things I like pretty things I like nice things but they can be deceptive they can make you think that they can make you happy but they really can't things have no ability to keep you happy the only thing that can keep you happy is being right with God right. amen, amen. Have all the things you want to have and give away as much as you can because there's nothing better than helping somebody else. But I don't think we should have a lot of anything if we're not willing to share it and give it and be a blessing to other people. Story. I used to work for a seafood company and this was many, many years ago. Dave and I had not even bought our first home yet. And I had went to work so we could buy a home. And we only had one car, and the job that I had was in the area where he worked. It was in downtown St. Louis, so I was able to ride with him. So that was the job I wanted to keep. And I had just committed to about $1,200 worth of work on my teeth which today would probably be like 50,000. And they had already kind of started the work, so it wasn't a good time to be quitting it. And I worked for a Jewish man, which I guess is neither here nor there, but I'm just making the point that he was a Jewish man and I was a Christian. And I was the bookkeeper. And somebody overpaid their bill, they paid an invoice twice. And he always looked at all the invoices at the end of the month before I sent them out. And he brought that one out to me and he wanted me to put a debit on the account against that credit so they would not realize that we owed them money. Which in effect meant that he was gonna steal their money. And he wanted me to help him. Well, I mean, I didn't know hardly anything then. I mean, I was still in a denominational church and didn't know that much of the word, but I knew enough to know that was wrong. <laughs> How many of you know we're not as dumb as we like to pretend like we are sometimes? <laughs> I mean, I knew that was wrong. I didn't need a sermon preached to me. I didn't need an angel to appear to me. I didn't need a word of confirmation. I knew it was wrong. Well, I was so afraid that if I told him that I couldn't do it because I was a Christian, <laughs> that I would get fired. So I waited all day and I went home and I was miserable all night. I mean, like, you know, I really didn't want to lose this job. I was making good money, riches were involved, getting my teeth worked on, didn't have two cars. You know, I had all my reasons. <laughs> How many of you know anything about reasons? All right. And so finally, I thought, I've got to obey God. You know, there's nothing more miserable than not obeying God. And so 
I went to work real early the next morning because he got there early and I went into his office and I was shaking. And I said, I just need to tell you that I can't send, I can't put the debit on this account. I'm a Christian and I believe it would be wrong for me to do that. I feel like I would be stealing their money, which in effect I was telling him he was a thief. <laughs> and I don't want to lose my job. I hope you don't get angry, but I just can't do it. And he said, well, just get back out there and go to work. So I went out to my desk and went to work and all, all day long, all day long, I expected him to come out and tell me not to bother coming back. But at the end of the day, he came out and he put that statement on my desk and he said, well, just send them a check. Okay, now, I'm gonna tell you something and you may believe me and you may not, but if I would not have done that 40 years ago, I'm not positive I would be standing here telling you the story tonight. <laughs> See, there are many, many tests that God gives us on our little journey. And a lot of where you're at five years from now, 10 years from now, two years from now, 20 years from now is going to be dependent on what you're doing now. Come on, what I'm saying to you right now may be one of the most important things you've ever heard. Amen? Amen. And yes, God forgives sin, but sin still has consequences. We don't like to hear that part. I mean, a, a man can commit murder and he can be forgiven, but he can still go to prison. Sin has consequences. Now, there are times when God in his mercy delivers us from those consequences, but not always. Another story, another thing that can be very deceiving is reasoning. You know what reasoning is? It's when God says something and we reason out that it can't be God because. Come on, it's getting closer to my time to be over. <laughs> Another story. Maybe you've heard me tell this if you watch TV, but to me this is just it's so indicative of what we do. I mean, even us good Christians do this kind of stuff. <laughs> I bought a dress that was red. I, I liked it so much, I bought it. It was one size too big for me. But it, the kind of, the way it was made, it didn't really make that much difference because it had drop shoulders and it was full and had a belt and so they put the nice little clear plastic bag on it. I bought some red and silver earrings that they had with it, you know, on the counter, matched it, took it home, put it in my closet. For some reason, every time I went to wear the dress, I just thought, no, nah, I'll wait. And so one day I was in my closet praying for a girl that volunteers, volunteered at our meetings back then. Her name was Ruth Ann Pacewick. And, oh God, thank you for Ruth Ann. God, what can I do to bless Ruth Ann? Don't ever ask God <laughs> when you're in your closet. Come on, ladies, this is just a piece of fashion advice. Do not ask God what you can do for some other woman when you're in your closet. Got it? And right away, I heard, give her the red dress. Now here's, here's how fast this happens. I mean, this took probably less than a minute. And I thought, that can't be God. That can't be God because that dress is new. 
I haven't even worn the dress yet. It can't be God. And I mean, just that quick. I forgot about the red dress. I forgot about Ruth Ann. <laughs> Went right on to the meeting where Ruth Ann was volunteering and prayed that God would bless her. <laughs> Come on, you spiritual thing, you. <laughs> We're always blessing. I bless you. I bless you. Well, what if God wants you to bless somebody? <laughs> Come on. God told me maybe two or three years ago, he said, stop asking me to do things for people that you could easily do and just don't want to. <laughs> See, we want to be so giving until... We have to give something that we like. I wouldn't have minded if it would have been an old dress that I was tired of. <laughs> but the new red dress, so I forgot about it. About a month later, I'm back in the closet. God just is very persistent. I'm back in the closet, I'm praying for Ruth Ann. Oh God, what can I do to bless Ruth Ann? Bad mistake. I'm, I look right at the red dress. So I thought, uh, might as well just give it to her, I guess. I said to God, this was dumb, but I said to God, but I've got those pretty red and silver earrings that match it. And he said, I was going to let you keep the earrings, but if it's a problem, just give those to her too. <laughs> yes, a little thing. But did it affect my future? I think so. You know, I think that when we do what God tells us to, it brings future blessings into our life. And when we don't, it doesn't mean I could have kept the dress and gone to heaven. I could have probably sent the invoice out with a zero balance and gone to heaven. Our salvation is not purchased with the things that we do or don't do, but I'll tell you, they matter to God and they have a lot to do with the anointing on our life. And we, the anointing on our life is so precious we should protect it and guard it because it's the power of God that goes through you and comes off of you to be a blessing to other people. And that's something else we need to hear more about is the anointing and how to protect it, how to honor it, how to keep it. Amen? You know, we, we had a little partner event here, 10 of our partners, our beautiful partners who support our ministry. And we were just talking about how amazing it is to give. And one of the men said, I am so grateful that I was taught to give. And see, I, I came from the era where it wasn't uncommon when a pastor was receiving an offering to preach for 20 minutes on giving. But today, if you did that, people would get mad and think you're just another one of those preachers trying to get their money. But we need to be taught to give. Jesus said more about money than he did heaven or hell. Did you know that? Don't get mad at your spiritual leaders when they teach you things that are in the Bible. Just because maybe you don't want to do it. So Ruth Ann got the red dress and she came to work for us full time and she wore it for a long time and 
She finally gave it back to me. <laughs> and I wish that you could see that dress on me now. It does still fit me. And it is the goofiest looking thing <laughs> you have ever seen. Why I ever would have liked that dress is beyond me. <laughs> but of course, it's just so out of style now, you know, it's just pathetic. We've all got our stories, but Jesus told parables. He had to tell stories about other people. I rarely ever have to get beyond me or Dave. I told Dave if I wasn't married to him, I don't know if I could preach because I always have Dave's stories. However, he's been pretty good lately, so I <laughs> don't have a Dave story tonight. I'm sorry. I told him he needs to act up a little bit. <laughs> James 1.22, but be doers of the word Obey the message and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. Do you see that? That's exactly what I did. I deceived myself through reasoning that God couldn't possibly want me to give that dress away because it was new. Anybody ever done anything like that? Oh, five of you, please. <laughs> See, the problem is, is we do it, and half the time we don't even know that we're doing it. I mean, nobody says, well, I'm just going to disobey God. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just, I know that God said that, but I'm just going to disobey him. We don't say that. We come up with other stuff. Well, the truth will make you free. There's facts and then there's truth. And there's a lot of things that are facts. It's a fact that my father sexually abused me. It's a fact that my mother did nothing about it because she was weak and fearful. And it's a fact that it went on long enough that it really, really messed me up. And I had so many problems but I was deceived, I didn't know I had problems. I thought something was wrong with everybody else. They used to have a basket in the grocery store where I shopped when my kids were real little. They don't, they don't do this anymore, but it had dented cans in it and cans with no labels and you could buy any can for 10 cents. And uh, so if you got, got one that was dented, you tried to get one that had the smallest dent. And if you got one with no label, I mean, I can remember hoping I got peaches or applesauce or something like that we could eat. Occasionally I got something okay, but there was a time when I got dog food and I didn't have a dog and that didn't help me. <laughs> you know, people are kind of like that. <laughs> we come with dents. And we try to pick out the ones that have the smallest dents. And most people come with no label. You really don't know for sure what you're getting. And Dave for sure didn't know what he was getting. Poor guy prayed for somebody that needed help. And he got his prayer answered. We had five dates and he asked me to marry him. I always tell him, you had to take me really quick because I had been on my good behavior about as long as I could stand. It was about to get really nasty. And oh, God has done so much for me. And it has been so hard, but so wonderful. The fact was that I had all those things happen to me and I believed the devil's lies. I let him deceive me. I believed I could never recover, that I would always have a second-rate life. 
but I learned the truth. That Jesus would give me beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That he would change me and use me and that he would use what I went through in my childhood to help other hurting people. And that's what he wants to do with every single one of you. For all things work together for good. Do you hear me? All things work together for good to those who love God and want his will. Whatever the devil has managed to do to you in the past, you can turn it around and use it against him. It's a time for us to all come up a little bit higher. Has anybody made a decision tonight to come up just a little bit higher? Amen. I'm going to pray for you, and then I guess Todd will come and give an altar call for people that want to be born again. But let me just pray for you. Father, I pray for everybody in here tonight that God, help us not to be deceived. Please help us not to be deceived. Help us to live with our eyes wide open and to be careful how we live and not to be influenced by ungodly people and the ungodly things that are going on in the world. God, use every single one of us to make other people want you. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our compromises. And help each of us to come up a little bit higher and represent you just a little bit better. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, you can take it, sorry, go ahead. You can remain standing for just a minute. Tonight we were encouraged. We were admonished, we were rebuked. That's good. And I don't want this moment to end without responding. See, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you through a servant of God, we have to respond. And so I wanna pray, would you bow your heads with me? We're gonna pray for just a moment. And if there's something that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you about that you just need to repent of tonight, maybe a lie that you were believing, maybe a, a sin that you've been condoning, something that you've been thinking, ah, it's not that bad. Maybe some unforgiveness that you've been holding on to towards somebody and it's holding on to you and you need to release it tonight. I know this is old school, but if you need to repent of something tonight, if the Lord has shown you something you need to repent of tonight, I want you to come forward and we're gonna pray a prayer of repentance together. It could be something small that the Lord pricked your heart on. It could be something big and we're gonna pray together. So if you, just, if you need that, just move out of the aisle, come down. You're just saying, Lord, I, wanna, I, want, I don't wanna miss out on anything, Lord, that you've been speaking to my heart on tonight. I'm gonna, I repent. Repent means I turn. Repent means I was going in one direction and I stop because the Holy Spirit has touched me and I turn and I move in the opposite direction. I've heard the word of God tonight and so I don't wanna keep moving in the direction I've been moving in. I wanna turn and move with the Spirit. I wanna move in the direction of what God has for me. And so by you making a move, what you're doing right now, to step forward, you're saying, I'm repenting. I, I've, been, I've been believing 
a lie. I've been moving in the wrong direction. But tonight, tonight is a marker night for me. Tonight is a night where I'm no longer moving in that direction. Tonight is a night that I am turning and I'm moving towards God and what he has for me. I'm so proud of each and every one of you making this statement tonight, making this confession. You moving out of where you are, you are making a confession. Even if you can't make it all the way down here, all the way back in the aisle, you are making a confession tonight. And so I, I want to give you a moment right where you are, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's not a prayer of salvation. It's a prayer of repentance. It's a prayer of saying, Holy Spirit, you are right, and tonight I turn. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that have moved out of where they are to say we are moving towards you. We have heard you speak tonight, Holy Spirit. We've heard you whisper in our heart. We've heard you convict us of things we've been condoning, things we've been rationalizing and justifying in our life. It could be unforgiveness. If it's unforgiveness, you just need to say, Lord, I forgive that person. Help me to forgive that person tonight. I release that person. If there's been integrity issues, areas of compromise, just tell him, I'm not going to compromise in that area anymore. Lord, I'm, thank you for showing it to me. Thank you for putting the light down on it. I'm going to walk in your light tonight. I'm going to walk in a different pathway tomorrow and this next week. If it's a sexual sin that you've been justifying and rationalizing and saying everybody's doing it, but listen, tonight you've been saying, Lord, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to be holy and pure for you. We repent, Lord, we repent. We move up a little bit higher. And tonight you see my brothers and sisters that have come forward to say that we're not gonna go the old way anymore because you've got new life for us tonight. I pray that you'd fill them with your Holy Spirit tonight. I pray that tonight they would know, John said, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as you confess tonight, you're forgiven. As you confess tonight, you stand clean. As you confess tonight, you are made whole. And so, Lord, I pray that every person here tonight would be filled with a fresh indwelling of your Holy Spirit this week, that we would walk in the power and the anointing of your Spirit, that, God, we would move up closer to what you have for us, and that we would be lights shining in the darkness, we pray. I pray blessing on each and every one. As we continue to pray tonight, some of you here might need to get your life right with Jesus. What you need to do is you need to confess, Jesus, you're my Lord. I'm sorry I've walked away from you. I'm sorry I haven't been following you. And if that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer. And right where you are standing or maybe kneeling, if you, if that's you and you want to confess Jesus as Lord tonight, would you raise your hand and say, I want to get my life right with Jesus? Yeah, I see your hands. Hold them up high. All across this room, you're saying, I want to get my life right. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. My friend, when we pray this prayer, the Bible says your confession of faith, that he is not just Lord, but he is your Lord, that he'll step in and forgive you. He'll wipe all the past gone all the past will be made clean and you will be right with him tonight so let's pray this prayer out loud all of us are going to pray it but you those of you with your hands up this is your prayer tonight so you prayed a little bit louder just say this say dear lord jesus come into my life forgive me of all my sin make me a new person from the inside out and i will follow you the best i know how every day of my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, church, let's thank the Lord tonight for his move. Thank the Lord for all these that made a confession tonight. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We are made whole, man. We're gonna live a, a big life for the Lord. Hey, we love you so much. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight. We're here every Sunday night. I'll be here next Sunday night. Come back with us as we worship God. We love you. God bless. Have a good night.